Hi, welcome to the Whiskey Chicks podcast. My name is Amy. And I am Amy's sister, Susie. We are going to be talking to you about Whiskey Chicks. You may ask yourself, what in the world is a Whiskey Chick? Well, it's a term our Nana, our grandmother, used to describe anything and everything, like a doodad or a thingamajig. For our purposes today, Amy and I have framed Whiskey Chicks as those random moments in life that accumulate over time that compel us to grow, learn, and evolve. Whether it's good, bad, ugly, funny, or sad, with each whiskey chick comes a lesson, an aha moment, a lotus blooming from the mud and muck, resulting in wisdom and healing. Whiskey chicks have brought us both to a place in our lives where we love ourselves and speak our truths. The last thing Nana said to me before she passed on was, be true to yourself, little A. That was the nickname she had for me. The angel spoke straight through her in that moment, and I knew I had quite a journey ahead of me. It was that whiskey chick, the last whiskey chick she delivered, that set me off on an incredible growth journey. She is the force behind this creative endeavor. We dedicate every whiskey chick to her. We're grateful you're here. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Chicks. I'm Susie. And I'm Amy. And we're back to talk about yet another riveting, yet life-enriching topic. So today we've decided uh, to talk about something uh, that you may or may not have heard. I've only heard Amy use the term, but when I looked it up on the internet today, I saw that it does exist, but it's called portion distortion. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and being that we're in a new year and a lot of people are rethinking their eating habits or coming down from whatever the hell they did to themselves over the holidays, we all experience this in January. Um, but, you know, how about how about just making conscious choices for yourselves that extend beyond, you know, the whatever the statistic is of how long people adhere to a New Year's commitment But um, And that's not what this is about. I want to be clear. This has nothing to do with the New Year's resolution. Um, It's just sort of been on my mind, and Amy brought it up, and so that's why it was on my mind. But as I mentioned before, Amy is a rock star registered dietitian, and so we're going to use her and bleed her for valuable information. (laughs) We're going to use her skills. But, you know, Amy... Amy's been working with me, obviously, most of my life because I have uh, struggled with my weight basically since puberty. And, um, you know, being in your 50s, it's it's harder to, to deal with even more. So there's so much science behind how to truly eat and take care of your – feed yourself in different ways, whether it be food, spirituality, um, exercise, sleep – you know, getting that balance in check. And Amy's kind of been my ride or die with that because she knows so much. I'll just say this before I let you talk is that I truly feel that you know more than any doctor has ever told me about nutrition because doctors get like three hours of it in all their education. And we're not living in a country where doctors are educated on educating patients on diet and nutrition like someone like you would as a dietitian. And um, anyway, you have discussed portion distortion with me on many occasions. Um, it's something that I I struggle with. And, uh, you know, anyway, I'm going to let you now tell everybody what is portion distortion. Well, first of all, I think you're not alone in struggling with portion distortion because as a nation as a country we have portion distortion and it's not necessarily our fault um it's it's the food industry it's restaurants it's fast food it's all of it if you look at it, what a a slice of pizza looked like back when we were kids like in the 70s it's like the 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 one what's considered one slice of pizza has like quadrupled in size since then. That's so, the people eating the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> one plus one equals two. Ooh. I mean, it's just like, you know, you, you, you quadrupled the portion 
yeah, you quadruple the energy you're putting into your body or the calories. And, and then, you know, you couple, you couple that with, um, a sedentary lifestyle. I mean, more and more and more we're sitting on our butts, especially with, you know, the pandemic hit and it got even worse. We're all working from home now. We're sitting, I ate, we're sitting in cars. We're sitting, we're not moving like we used to. Kids aren't running outside and going out to play like we used to. They're all sitting playing video games. And, you know, so our, our food portion sizes have gotten bigger and in the, in the food industry is like, they're trying to trick us, right? I mean, we go to a restaurant, fast food or otherwise, and you sit down and they serve you this plate of food and the automatic assumption is, okay, this is for one person. Cause this is what I ordered, you know? So it's mine. Well, no, the typical restaurant portion will serve three or four people. So the first thing anybody should do is just like cut it in thirds and ask for a doggy bag. But here, here's, here's the psychological part of it. You know, it, it's cheaper to supersize something. You're going through the drive-thru, you know, would you like to supersize that for only five cents more. Oh, sure. Triple the fries, double up on the patties. <laughs> it's more economical. So it's a psychological game too. And so as a nation, we are, we are overfed, but we're undernourished. It's like, we're, we're not healthy at all. We have such an abundance of food and we're all, uh, the obesity rate is unbelievable. I'm also a certified diabetes educator. And so I, my specialty is diabetes and the, 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 the knowledge around food and the ideas around food for most people are, are, are really, it, it, it's really, oh, we have a lot of work to do. Let's just, let's just put it that way. There's not enough dietitians in this country to even start to chip away at it. You're, you're Unfortunately, <laughs> we are, we're totally outnumbered. And I know I've got a lot of fellow RDs that are listening to this podcast that are like going, woo, 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 you, you, you preach, you, you preach, <laughs> <laughs> you go but, go preach. <laughs> but if you go to the, and, and here's where Susie can chime in. You go to Europe, the food looks, not only is the food less processed, it's fresher. It's definitely more farm to table. Um, the portions are reasonable. It, it's a completely different ball game in Europe than it is here in the U.S. Wouldn't you? And, wouldn't you? No, agree I with agree, that? and I I won't just for protecting her. I won't say her name, but I have a, a very dear friend of thirty plus years that lives in Germany, and you know who you are. And, uh, <laughs> you know, every time I go to visit her, when I first started going to visit her, the, the town that she lives in, it was literally a, vi a village, very small. It's, it's grown a little bit since then, but you know, you walk out her front door and there are, you know, probably at least two or three bakeries within a five to seven minute walk of her house or like, but she goes to like, you know, the butcher, the baker and all that. We do go to the grocery store there, but she always laughs at me when we'd be shopping and I'm like, Oh, it's organic. And she'd be like, isn't everything organic? Cause they don't spray shit on their food. Yeah. They don't and do the things to their food that we do to our food, which in a sense is, you know, making us sick. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm going to, I don't want to go off on that tangent, but you know, you were talking about, we have to say know, it. that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> it really is a whole other, it's like probably four <laughs> other podcasts, but you know, when you mention like supersizing things, it's like, you know, we go to, we go to the grocery store or one of those big box stores, you know, where you need a membership. And it's just like the, I, I see people with flatbeds, like flatbeds that could fit like five or six children on it. And there's just like cases of soda and white bread and just all meat and all this shit on it. When I go there, I get like, you know, frozen fruit for my smoothies and like the most, the most evil thing I've ever gotten there is like some popcorn, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, or maybe something for my, for my apartment. But like, I, I walk around and almost feel sick at the volume of just, I'm going to say it again, just shit that they're offering 
for people to eat. In their defense, they they have up their game on healthy things in these bigger box stores, but that's not the target. The target is everybody wants the deal and they're going to buy whatever the deal is because that's the most economical, you know? Yeah. But it doesn't mean, but is it because it could be causing you bigger health problems because you're eating more? You know, it's like, why are we being encouraged to just eat more? We're not going to die of starvation, you know? So I, I don't know. I'm very much in the mindset of like, you know, you go to the grocery store every two to three days to buy fresh stuff to make fresh food. And, you know, when, when you're setting up your plate, I know there's sort of like a, a matrix for the eyes of how the portions are supposed to look in terms of like maybe a protein, a carb, a, you know, a, a vegetable or whatever. Right. I think, isn't there like a, yeah, it's called my a pie plate. chart for that. What's it called? Yeah. My plate. My plate. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over it's to my not plate. Your plate is- <laughs> yeah. Don't touch my plate because my portion's too small. <laughs> <laughs> Come but on. You, it's interesting because you you said back when you were talking about your friend in Germany, um, you know, and it's not just Germany, it's it's other European countries. I mean, I've I've been to a number of them and you walk. <laughs> you walk to the grocery store. You walk to the butcher, you walk to the bakery, you walk and you gather fresh food and you get some exercise while you do it, you know, and how many, there's a lot of people that aren't even walking around big box stores or walking around the grocery store anymore. They're using Instacart and, you know, or the (laughs) in-store cart that you sit in. (laughs) Exactly. I mean, so there's... (laughs) Oh God! I was, or when it backs it. up, Boop. Oh, yeah. Boop. But so it's just it's this it's this cycle that's just getting worse and worse and worse. We're we're eating way too much. The quality of our food isn't that good, and unfortunately, if you do want to buy organic or local, it's more expensive than the not the non-organic or the not so good stuff. You know, the 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 crap, the processed crap is more economical than fresh organic produce, which is really sad. Well, not only then, that, but the 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 crap, the crap when you eat it, it's like drugs, right? Your brain's like more 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 more, right? Mm-hmm. Like you just <laughs> more you syrup, more, it's, that cartoon. <laughs> more butter, more syrup. More syrup mm-hmm. more syrup. <laughs> You know, I, I mean, I it's it, it's true, but it's funny getting back to the walking thing. So Amy and I were very fortunate that we have um, beautiful friends and family in Amsterdam as well. And we spend as much time or I go as often as I can. Um, Amy and I were there last year and it was funny, like everywhere we went, like at the end of the day, we'd get back to like our flat and. Amy's like, oh my God, we walk like seven and a half miles today <laughs> on your watch. And I was like, what? I mean, and so that is just so natural, especially in a place like Amsterdam where there's more bicycles than people and they make it very, very expensive for you to even own a car. So most people just, they ride bicycles or they use public transportation or they walk, but they're outside, they're breathing. Even if it's not for a long time, it's just about getting outside, breathing fresh air, like making more of an effort that way to do the things, the simple things, like you say, going to the grocery store, walking to a friend's house instead of driving. So the country makes it easy to do that. Yeah. You know, I mean, they set it up. So that people can easily walk, ride a bike, get fresh food, you know. And the other thing that amazes me too, I noticed this in Italy and I believe in Amsterdam as well. Unless you go to a Starbucks or something, you don't get coffee to go. You sit down and you drink your coffee. Yeah, you enjoy it. You go and you order it. They serve it to you in a mug. You sit down and you drink it. If you're just on the go, if you're like in Rome, if you're busy, you know, and you need a shot of espresso or something, they'll give it to you in a ceramic, little ceramic cup, but you just down it and then you're on your way. People are not walking around carrying paper coffee cups. You know, it, it's an, it's a, 
it's a completely different environment. Might and, as well be an IV bag, just constantly feeding them sugar. Well, and and, and caffeine. You, unless again, unless you go to a Starbucks or something like that, the local coffee shops in Europe they don't sell f- fifty ingredient coffee beverages. You can't even no. call them coffee at that point. I, I mean, they're just desserts in a cup. And by the way, <laughs> if you're looking, I'm sorry, let's go back to portion distortion for a second. I digress. But usually if someone comes to me and says, hey, you know, I, I need to lose a few pounds. I'm trying to figure it out. The first thing I'll ask him is, what do you drink? What do you drink for coffee? And what do you drink during the day? soda wise and stuff or whatever. What do you, what are your beverages? Oh, well, I start my morning out with a venti caramel frappa doo macchiato, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, that's 500 calories right there. That's like four or 500 calories. And in textbook, you need to find like around 500 calories a day to deficit in order to lose one pound of fat per week. Now, that's not true for every single person. There is a lot of individuality woven into this. But generally speaking, you need to deficit 3,500 calories in a week in order to lose one pound of body fat. So the first thing you can do is try to find 500 calories a day to deficit, whether it's with doing a little more exercise and burning some calories or finding little shortcuts in what you do on a day-to-day basis to reduce your calorie load, especially um, non-quality calories like sugar and stuff. So the first thing I do is tackle the coffee drink and boom, we're done. There's, There's your calories. There's your deficit for the day. Switch to an Americano, you know, with a splash of half and half and you've already you're already like hundreds of calories ahead of yourself. Well, not but only every- that, but if you eliminate that caramel frappadoo and sw- <laughs> even if you if you either eliminate it or switch to an americano, you're probably going to put 3 to 5 dollars back in your pocket to go buy that plants. Too. <laughs> that too. And you're also saving those poor baristas. I mean, and everybody standing behind you waiting for their coffee <laughs> because the drinks have gotten so complicated now that the coffee drinks, this is like, okay, here we go. Number two, th- this is a whole other podcast. The coffee <laughs> drinks have gotten so complicated that it's like, how long do I have to wait for my, I drink Americanos. That's all I drink. You know, how long do I have to wait for my Americano while some, while the barista puts together this, this drink that has not only a million ingredients, but then a million alterations to it right <laughs> like half of this and two pumps that and blah 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 <laughs> it's like it makes you oh want to go God. in and be like can i have coffee flavored coffee <laughs> <laughs> but anyway so that's another example for me that that i think resonates with everybody is the coffees they're huge we get venti sizes and they're they're really not even coffee anymore they're just full of calories and so sugar sugar pure sugar but you know the the food industry has really got us fooled so if we just kind of drill it back down to portion sizes if you're going to have a chick a piece of chicken if you're going to decide to eat some red meat if you're going or protein for example 3 to 4 ounces is the appropriate portion for that It should fit approximately in the palm of your hand. If you go to a restaurant, a steakhouse, for example, or, you know, any, any place that serves meat, I have found that the smallest portion of meat, I don't know, and I'm not, and this is a whole other podcast, but I'm not really, I don't eat meat anymore. I know. Ding, ding, ding. Well, I don't, I don't think we said it in the last two, so we have to make up. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, there is there is nothing smaller than eight ounces on the menu. And and I noticed that whether I'm gonna order it or not, just reading through, it's like, man, that that's two portions right there. And then it goes up from there, up to these tomahawk things and sixteen ounces, eighteen, twenty-four ounces. And they they serve it to you 
And because it's being given to you on one plate, you think, oh, this is one portion, but it's not. It's like for five people. So it, it it's just, it's gotten just out of control in my mind, you know? So um, pizza slices have grown, pieces of protein have grown. The only time that you cannot really um, complain about portion distortion or, or, or claim is when you're eating veggies. The more, the better on the, especially the green leafies. I mean, you just go for it. Most of your plate should be color. And, and that is, um, that's good. And, and, and back to the restaurant plate, typically when you order, unless you're ordering a big ginormous salad or something, if you order a, a, a chicken, a protein, a pasta dish, okay, <laughs> a serving of pasta should be about half a cup cooked. Okay. What but is no your, one's eating that. No. I mean, what, what does your pasta bowl look like if you order some pasta at a restaurant? Good Lord. It's like a mixing bowl full of pasta. Oh, here's one portion. No, that's for like 10 people. So, you know, it's, it's nuts, but what's missing on the plate? What do they skimp on? Veggies. Vegetables. You know, that there's, there's no portion distortion there. I mean, there, there's like this little tiny handful of vegetables in the midst of the mashed potatoes and the, you know, whatever. So anyway, we've all just been, we're, we're getting snowed. We're getting snowed. We are getting snowed, you know, and it, it's also, I feel, you know, and I, I'm just going to say this. I know here I'll say it. Number four, this is a whole other podcast, <laughs> but this, this is actually true. And I learned this from, I've had the same naturopath uh, for about 10 years now. He, works um where in in the hospital he's in an integrative medicine office where i've had all my cancer treatment and i still go to him once a month for acupuncture and love but when i first went to him you know we were talking about like what what is this naturopathic stuff i didn't know anything about it but he was the one that i had no clue but this is 100 percent true that uh Rockefeller and Carnegie were the the founding fathers of big pharma in this country. Mm-hmm. And all the money went into the big universities like Yale, Harvard, any any big university that with your degree on the wall would make you an extra fancy doctor. You know, so they they decide how the the what is that called? The the classes that a doctor has to take to become a doctor, like that path that they're on. It's completely different than, you know, like my, my naturopath, he teaches at the, at the naturopathic college uh, where I live. And, you know, so I see, I've seen like both sides of it. I go to my, um, my regular primary care doctor for blood work and all that. But my naturopath is the one that I, I really am in tune with him because I feel like we live in a country where they want us to be sick. I don't Mm -hmm. don't know how much more plainly to put that. Otherwise we wouldn't have these things on offer. We wouldn't be spraying crap on our food. We wouldn't be encouraged to eat such huge portions. I mean, you know, healthcare in this country is unaffordable to a large enough amount of people that it's, it, you know, it's, it's sort of alarming because again, we know people that live in other countries, not even necessarily Europe, but other countries where, you know, they, they have a much better, cheaper healthcare system because they, they encourage their inhabitants to live a more balanced lifestyle. We are not encouraged that here. It's become a thing now to kind of figure that out. And it starts with what you feed yourself for fuel inside your body and what that looks like in front of you on a plate. I am guilty of portion distortion probably almost every day, but it is becoming more plant heavy, which I'm happy to say. Um, But, you know, it's, and again, you can have a salad, but like, don't pour ranch all over it. You know, <laughs> you know how cheap it is to make your own. You can make your own salad dressing with pantry staples and like third sta- staples staples and like <laughs> pantry staples. 
You can make your own salad dressing with pantry staples in like 38 seconds instead of buying a bottle of ranch or otherwise because it's it's that's a convenience food. But if you flip around that label, there's evils in there like sugar and all that stuff. So, you know, it's about wanting to change your life, hold yourself more accountable for what you feed your body for fuel and, you know, just making time for that, like make it ritual that you take care of yourself and what you're, what you're feeding yourself with food, what you're feeding yourself with spirit, what you're feeding yourself with the people you surround yourself by. All of these things can have a portion distortion aspect to them. It's about balance, True. but what you actually put in the, the engine that's your body. And I, I was talking to Amy about this. We had a long chat before we recorded, you know, I'm here. I am on the precipice of 52 and I, really learned last night what it means to have visceral fat on your on your belly and not it being the squishy stuff that I can grab more than a handful of but the stuff that's actually compressing my internal organs and I got a visual of that in my head and I thought well that's not fair to my guts like they've I I've lasted this long like why would I continue to you know distress them like that you know mm. and so, but it is a personal choice. Some people might think we're just talking shit right now and that's fine. But, sure. you know, <laughs> some people might be eating a burger while they're listening to us, but they're supersized me, Coke. Let me, but Let me just say, it is okay from time to time to, to eat whatever the heck. If it sounds good, it's what you do the majority of the time that matters. You know, if 20% of the time you feel like going and having that double cheeseburger just because it just sounds good and you want to satisfy an itch, then have it. But, you know, a lot of society, it's, that's a daily thing for them. It's daily. And um, go to when you go to a restaurant, you know, take a look at what, what shows up on your plate and commit to eating only half and taking half home. You know, um, especially if you're going straight home, I don't want to encourage, you know, putting food in the trunk and then going and watching a movie or anything like that, but, um, and eating hot buttered popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Oh, I don't even get me started about the butter they put on the popcorn, uh, but you know, it's, it's, um, it's just becoming more aware, just more aware of, of, um, portion sizes what your food contains a good rule of thumb is is if it's got more than three or four ingredients it's probably not good for you if it's got no label at all it's great for you i.e apple broccoli if there's no food label if it doesn't need nutrition facts it's 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 good right so um just a few little things to keep in mind, just to increase your awareness around, um, around food. But yeah, por the portion sizes are just out of control here. And, and for those of you out there listening that are in Europe or have been to travel to Europe, you know what I'm talking, we know what we're talking about. You know what we are talking about with regards to, um, freshness and portion. And, you know, I, you know, I eat pasta here and I feel sick. Even the gluten-free stuff just makes me feel like a lunk of lead, even in the right portion. And But when I've been to Italy, I can eat the fresh pasta and I'll lose weight. You know, I, I mean, it's it's nuts. The, the food is just, the food supply is totally different over there compared to here. So, um, yeah. Well, you know, there's the whole... Um, I always, you know, when I was a kid, remember we were talking on the phone and you were like, cacophony. And I'm like, you mean cacophony? Yes. And you're like, that's not how you say it. That I hear Siri going cacophony in the background. I'm like, you didn't believe me. I, I did the same thing with, uh, in school when I saw the word hypocrisy, hip Hippocrates. I'm like, who's Hippocrates? <laughs> Where did but that come from? <laughs> because because he's the one that said, "Let food be thy medicine, and medicine right. be thy food." That that was my point to saying that. Hippocrates, good old Hippocrates. So start learn learn to spell pharmacy. F A R M A C Y. Oh. Instead of P H 
A R M A C Y. So that so interesting. I won't. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole with you because this is your job. But you know, anybody that, and this is myself included. I am. I am walking a semi fine line on between getting type two diabetes. I've had just a couple like signs like if I continue this road, it is a possibility. So for someone like me at this point, it's completely reversible. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, but I feel like, you know, we live in a country where it's like, well, if I get diabetes, I'll just, you know, I'll just take insulin or do whatever, right? And not manage it. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that I feel like people that have diabetes manage it more on the insulin side than the diet side because they somehow maybe think that the insulin is going to keep them fine. Well, is that, am I lying today? Well, to yes and no. I mean, to their defense, <laughs> you know, seriously, it is, it is an, unlike other countries, it is extremely difficult. Most folks out there managing diabetes do not have access to a good diabetes educator. It's not something that's automatically provided to them. And like you said earlier on in the podcast, you know, doctors don't have knowledge of diet and they have 10 minutes to see the person. And when you're, when you're doing, when you're at a doctor's appointment for diabetes, you need more than 10 minutes because diabetes is all about data and pattern management. And you need someone to sit down and look at your blood sugars and, or or your sensor readings or whatever, and, and talk with you. What happened this day? What are you doing here? What did it? I mean, work it out, you know, and, and give advice and, and solutions and suggestions. And I mean, it, it really is a numbers game and, and doctors for the most part do not have the time to sit down and do that. So they just say, okay, well, your A1C is this. And so we're going to up the medication or put you on another medication or whatever. And people like good little soldiers go along with it because that's what the doctor told them to do. And, you know, I don't know how many times I've sat down with somebody and they've been managing diabetes for 10, 15, 20 years. And they'll look at me with tears in their eyes and say, I just learned more from you in the last 15, 20 minutes. And I've learned in the entire time I've had diabetes. It's just, it's just amazing to me how not only is it food, food supply, portions, um, money, all of it, it's also access to, to good education, good preventative education. Um, So a lot of people will never, they'll never have an opportunity to see a dietitian unless they're in the hospital and sick. And then we're there to help them get out of the hospital, you know? So it's, um, it's a, it's an interesting dynamic here in the United States. It really is. And, and I know what it's like in, in the industry in other countries, because when I go to conferences, they usually invite doctors from Belgium and Germany and other countries to come speak about how they manage their patients with diabetes and and what's available to them. It's like night and day. It's like night and day. You know, they don't have people over there struggling to decide between whether they should buy their insulin or buy their food on any given day or week. That that doesn't occur over there. So, um, you know, it's it's a it's a big giant snowball. I mean, we taught we're talking about portion distortion and just kind of how we've all been trained to just eat large portions of food because that's what we're served, but it really is just this multidimensional thing that is just snowballing. You know, all kind of everything that we've been just bantering about during this podcast is just it all kind of ties back to you know, what we're dished up, you know, what are you feeding yourself? I always say I'm a, I'm a gal that eats the kale and eats the cake. Well, and and balance balance. is important. Yeah. It, It is not all about being pristine all the time. It's about, you know, it's about making choices, good choices, the majority of the time and treating yourself when you feel like treating yourself and, you know, back to, you know, the four agreements and, um, 
New Year's resolutions and that sort of thing. It's about doing your best mm-hmm. all year long, right? Not just because we turned into a new year. And if doing your best at the party is having having some veggies so and then eating a big slice of cake later, then that was your best, you know? So But it's also about not beating yourself up for that. It's it's more about like Again, like as as an agreement, like if you eat cake and then you, you're hard on yourself, like you're taking that personally and you shouldn't, you should allow yourself to, to have that, you know, it's not about denying yourself uh, something nice or a, a simple pleasure, like, you know, uh, something you really want to eat that you shouldn't be eating or you haven't eaten in a while. But, you know, it, it's about, again, balance and allowing yourself to do that without judging yourself or being hard on yourself because that's the self-deprecation is worse for you than eating an entire cake in one sitting. Exactly. Exactly. So well, we're at the 34 minute I know mark. we went, we went on today. Let me tell you, but, yeah. uh, but I like this topic. I mean, we could go on a long time about it, but, um, but we promised we would not torture you with long because <laughs> <laughs> we're nice. It's a whisker chick commitment. That's right. But you know, it's um, yeah. Anyway, I'm sure we have we'll have way more podcasts because we, you know, it's a whole it's always a whole another podcast. But um, <laughs> God, some someday maybe we're gonna have my best friend on a podcast so she can give us crap for always saying that. I don't know. Maybe she'll be our first <laughs> guest and we'll torture her that way. But anyway, what do you want to sign for homework on this? I so, feel like there's yeah. a bunch of options, but there is a bunch of options, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to put it, this out there. You know, everybody's coming from a different walk of life, different financial circumstances, you know, different family dynamics, you know, working hours, that sort of thing. You know, so my, our ask is just do your best, Right. Take care of your body the best you can. But for homework, I, I want to, the next time you eat out, I want you to take a look at your plate and make the commitment that you're only going to eat half and you're going to take the other half home. That is if you're going straight home. I don't want to get any, any food safety issues, <laughs> but no, seriously, I have to put that disclaimer out there. Um, so just start being more aware of know that if you get pizza at Costco, one slice of pizza at Costco is probably two or three slices, two or three servings. So just start noticing. That's yeah. all. I might, I might add a, a bullet point onto your homework or like a parentheses. Okay. No, no, go ahead. No, just saying, cause I like someone like me, I never eat out. Um, but I do live alone and make meals for myself and build my own plates because this is something I need to homework myself on. But it's when I build my plates at home to really be thinking about, you know, if I make like a batch of rice or quinoa or something or, you know, when I'm building the plate, like how do those portions look within that plate? You know, so that's something I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself my own homework within our podcast, but if other people want to use it, that's fine. Cause I never eat out, but, um, cause no one wants to eat out with me. That's why. <laughs> but, well, but um, that's good. So for those who don't eat out a lot, I like that. Mm, I like that. So, um, <laughs> so <laughs> inside joke, anyhow, um, if you are eating at home and you're building your plate, try to cut your plate in half and half your plate should be vegetables, like green, leafy, colored, red, yellow, greens, and then the other half, you know, quarter of quarter carb, quarter protein. But try to start building a plate that is mostly vegetables. That's, another That's right. One. And as Amy would say, eat more things that come from plants, not made in plants. You've said that. You've said that to me. I've said that before? Yeah, yes, you have. I know I've said eat as close to the ground or as to the earth yeah, you, as possible. You've said, you, in one sentence, you said eat as low as you can on the food chain, and you're like, eat more plants, not things that are made in plants. <laughs> I don't remember that. But you okay. don't even remember your own Zen wisdom. 
I'm just kidding. All right, we're gonna we're gonna end there today. And as always, we're extremely grateful that you are with us on this journey. And um, yeah, we're super stoked. Hey, what would old Nana say? Be true to yourself. <laughs>